Indica or sativa? Mo what what do you normally smoke? I'd say sativa if I can get it because it's still pretty illegal here in Australia. Like there is the medical uh, that's kind of just happening in the last maybe six months. Sativa is definitely if I'm in the daytime, sativa all the way. Indica at the end of the night, but it seems most black market here is indica. So the Aussie thing is go to work, go home, rip a cone, pass out. It's like I still want to get stuff done. So for me, sativa is definitely. What I'd say gets my win. So let's, both are good, you know. Let, different, watch different the feds different bust smoke. through his door right now, and they're like, "We knew it." <laughs> let's take a hypothetical. Yeah, if if hypothetically you're on a corner and you walk up to a guy and buy fifty dollars worth of weed, and a cop witnesses it and handcuffs you both, what are you looking at? As far as time wise, I think that would just be a possession charge. That's probably maybe five hundred dollar fine, and then maybe some counseling. Like if you just getting caught with counseling? weed if you say that's a problem. Yeah, like it's like Damn, you can son. either go to court or you can go to counseling for your drug problem. And the drug problem is only necessarily getting caught with weed. It's not like something bad happened with your life. You lost all your money. You didn't show up yeah. at work or any of that. It's just having that possession is a drug problem. So do you do you it's, frequently? It's so that's the thing. But it could go gamble, you know, like do you frequently find that right here. that as someone that like personifies a weed image in somewhere that's not exactly so friendly that you kind of have to keep it on the low in certain scenarios? For sure. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> having deodorant on the train, maybe having one person who smells the worst but doesn't have anything <laughs> on them. So if there's a sniffer dog or cops come <laughs> there, the fall guy, which typically is me, like I'm the fall guy, but because obviously they look at me, they're like, all right, that's our week's quota of revenue. But when I don't have anything Damn. on me, then they look disappointed. They walk away. My friends have got it. We all smoke. Everyone wins. So it's just kind of staying one step ahead of that. When did you first start rapping? Um, oh, I guess back in high school, just fucking around, just freestyling and that. And it wasn't until Hobson came for a tour here that he invited up a bunch of MCs on stage. And that was my first time on stage. I hadn't written any songs at that point. It was purely just freestyling at parties. That was a freestyle and it went really well. And I think just purely because of that night and Hobson kind of giving that opportunity, that was like, that was the push of, okay, I should probably just fucking do this. Hey. So, so do you write most of, of most of your material? Sight would blow your mind. What was that? Oh yeah. Hobson as well. Ill Minds, fucking dope. Uh, Hobson's fire. Do you, do you write most of your... I love him. Do you write most of your material in the studio or do you just freestyle it on the spot like over the beat? Oh, definitely right. Right for sure, but I still freestyle every day because it's just an important thing to do even if you're on stage or, you know, you could be, if you're drinking or like, you know, you could stare at someone in the crowd and then that eye contact maybe throws you off where you're at and then you've lost your whole rhythm of the song. So freestyling is a way to kind of pad that. It can also be, you know, a way to connect with the crowd. So even though I write all my stuff, right diligently freestyling is still like a massive part of what i do and how i figure out the flow of a song when i'm first writing to it you're up blood i mean you kind of just hit the same thing i got so explain this hobson thing like i want to hear more about this hobson thing you got me stuck on him because i can recite so much of his so I like take me through this experience because that's a big deal Oh man, it was fucking crazy, hey. So it was the, the second tour that he was in Australia. So I saw him the first time around. Probably small crowd, but like intense kind of crowd. The next time he's come, he was just starting to kind of blow. I think this is maybe two years after he dropped Raw. Uh, he just okay. basically brought up three MCs for like a, an audience decides battle. So it's just like, look, each guy gets a verse. He put two people up for the third person. No one was putting their hand up and I was pretty drunk at that point. So I was like, fuck it put up my hand he's like all right you with the dreadlocks get up here so i'm like Hell walking yeah. up then i'm like oh shit like fuck i haven't i haven't got a single verse written you know like i was just fucking around with friends in the studio and we're just standing there on stage he's like look if these guys suck i don't want you to be so boo their fucking ass and i'm just looking out in the crowd one dude's just kind of mean mugging me in the crowd back and i'm like oh fuck this is like this is so sort of sink or swim type shit and mm -hmm. i had the mic i tried to hand it to the second guy who was next to me and he just kind of pushed the mic back and he's like nah dude you go you go and i was like all right fuck so just did it, went through a freestyle. It was sloppy as fuck, but I think, again, because the crowd knew it was a freestyle, I'm rapping about shit that's going on, they kind of appreciated it, handed it to the second guy. The second guy 
full on fucking froze, like didn't get a bar out, got booed off stage. Yeah. It was like, whoa, yeah. whoa, like eight mile type what? shit. Yeah, yeah, hectic. Like he just literally froze, crowd booed. The next dude went and he went more of like a, a battle bar kind of thing. So he was just kind of attacking us and the crowd wasn't really feeling it. So the audience decide thing, it was like freestyle, bomb, battle, and just seeing how that style, what worked with the crowd, seeing the freestyle kind of won, won it over. So from there, that was just that kind of big confidence of fuck it. All right, if I could do that with Hell zero yeah. prep, fucking yeah, drunk, yeah, winging yeah, it, yeah. then I should just fucking, I should pursue this because it was a fucking awesome night. You know what? Hell yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, that's uh, yeah, so mainly Rob Shaker at Shakedown Studios, so back in Perth. Uh, I'm looking at studios now here in Brisbane, but I'll probably still get Rob Shaker to master my tracks. So I've been using him since the first EP, and he's produced a lot of my beats, but also shout-outs to, you know, Lofty, Uncle Sam, Paulie P. There's a few local uh, producers in Perth that I use for most of my beats. If, if someone wanted to do a feature with you, would you prefer that they go through MadFap or hit you up directly? Yeah, yeah, just hit me up directly. Um, if you have a good beat, like I'm always on the hunt out for new beats and all kinds of styles. So sending the link to MadFap would be good because I can also check through the email there. But if you want to DM the Insta or Facebook pages, if you have yeah, a concept or a cool beat, I'm always open to it. Do you mind if we play a, a couple artists for you, for your for your opinion? Oh, what was that? Sorry? Do you mind if we uh, review a couple of bands with you, a couple artists with you? Like, you, we review them and oh, you... Oh, for sure, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why Hell do you yeah. sound like you asking them yeah. on a date and you nervous, bro? Yo, you're about to hang out with us and listen to some fucking cool people. You ready? <laughs> there you go. go. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. on this page, we have what we call a supporter option. And on that, we have uh, bands and artists that we play on said days for, for the stream. There's a particular artist right here that goes by the name of Edjo Bell that I want to play for you. Uh, he's a hip-hop hip -hop yeah, artist know. that's... Uh, been a fan of the show for a long time. It's really awesome, dude. Actually opening it up for Codmouth Kings. Edjo, Bell, Music. I feel like you guys would make a beautiful, beautiful track together. That's why I wanted to play them. But what'd you think? <coughs> yeah, that was cool, man. I'll check out more of his stuff. Like, that was a cool movement with the camera. You obviously found a, a pretty sweet location for that. It's going around to, like, the mirror shot as well. That was pretty dope. Yeah. Hell yeah. Mr. Wizard. You ready for trivia? Blunt, you do you are you good can at trivia, dude? It? Yeah, you can answer it. Are you good at trivia? That means I won't know. Do you do you consider yourself good at trivia, Bluntfield? Oh man, like for the right subject, yeah, but in terms of that like broad spec, like fuck no, dude. There's like there's these too are much random knowledge out there to know everything, and I'm not one of the guys who like I know dude. everything is like I think I this one's. I think yeah, this one's pretty I <laughs> easy. I think this one's pretty easy because one name's gonna come okay. to mind right away. So you guys, you guys get the first dibs on it. Who oh. was the first African American woman to host a TV show? Mm. <laughs> Shit. I mean, mm. and got it and landed on a question. So, Blunt, you, you get to ask me and Lloyd a question to switch it up one time. Yeah, sweet. All right, guys. So, I mean, this is pretty generic, but genuinely interested to know. What are your goals for 2022? Fuck you, man. Don't make me think about college <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, my goal... BG, you go first, sir. My goal is this show has become almost this close to full time for me. I would call it like 80%. So 2022 would be to go beyond the full time goal, but then also to be able to pay a small something, at least some fraction of a salary to all the help that I get of the people that help run the show with me, including Lloyd, including uh, Liz, Trista. There's a lot, there's a lot of people. So that'd be my goal. And uh, and I'm having a baby in March, so a healthy baby Let's that go! that is in, that yeah, is. Yeah, uh, congrats, man! Yeah, circle of life. Thank you. My goal is to have no babies. Um, <laughs> let's start that right away. I would like <laughs> I'm playing with it. I would like to drop an acoustic album during this year, as well as a couple uh, different styles of songs and through this year somehow get an SUV because I hate driving cars. 
and find a way to get more attention to this show so we can get more people going. So, Well done. Good goals. Yeah. Good goals. With that smoke out music vehicle, another vehicle. And no babies. Yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah. Maybe. Oh, with smoke Maybe. Out. If you're it's offering like... BG, I'll, I'll knock BG up, but, you know, it's... Blunt, what, what's your goal? What, what you got lined? I mean, you kind of name dropped the, like um, some festivals and stuff that you have, some releases. But let's talk like summer and the later yeah. half of 2022. What what are you thinking? Uh, and I, I I guess the second yeah, part yeah. to that question. Just... A second part to that question would be how much is Mad Fab in control of your releases? Like, do do they? If you're just like here, I want this out. Are they like boom, let's go? Or do they kind of pause yeah, you yeah. and and say timing, blah blah blah. Yeah, so yeah, I, I run Mad Fab, so it's kind of through me, and then through our network of producers, <laughs> yeah. marketers, that kind of stuff. So it's very ADD kind of s. It's all over the place, but that's the kind of freedom to just do any kind of project. So I've got a few collabs with different kind of styles, uh, with a blues band just making up. We're actually working on an animated stoner series to pitch to Netflix as well, uh, which I think we actually submitted what? it, and we find out in three weeks whether that gets the uh, the funding. That's all I can say on that right now, but it's like that would be fucking cool. Dude, that's major. Australian stone art. Comic that would probably be yeah. your full time job right away, um, like if that goes. Because that, now you're rich. Oh, for sure. Yeah, money wise, holy shit. Now I would have rich. to get up early and fucking work <laughs> gyms because that's a grind, dude. Like, that's definitely, yeah, next year, ideally, I'd be like to working full time on music, art, and projects. So I've been like slowly Let's building that. Go. The East, I had to get a job, but yeah, fucking earth. Like, Ideally as well, second half of the year, I had wanted to come over to Cali and Canada as well, probably again on the West Coast like Vancouver. But it seems like international travel is a bit dodgy at the moment. So I feel like 2023 for Cali and BC are probably, that's more realistic, like April 2023. So next year, just focus on releases, touring around Australia and potentially getting this uh, Stoner TV show signed. Dude. If you need any extra voices, holler at me. Yeah. I got you. I got all the gear to knock it out immediately. No, no hesitation. Uh, yeah, dude, sure. <laughs> I got you. Dude, dude, yeah, yeah. Yo, is there is there a particular record in your set that's has like maybe like a really fast section or something that's a little bit of a tongue twister and hard to perform for any reason? Yeah, uh, Nature Boy 420 is probably that's like a, a high energy double time kind of weed track. And by the second verse in the hook, it's fucking hard to breathe. And we're jumping around on stage. We have Nature Boy Stick Flare, 16 time bong smoking champion joining us. And that's like a high energy one. And by the end, I'm fucking winded. But I'm doing boxing. I'm trying to build my cardio up for that as well, for those kind of tracks. Because fuck it. Uh... Who's your. Oh, dude, stage cardio is legit a thing. Yeah, for people real. People forget that, like, a lot of people will stand still when they practice and not move around and do anything. Yeah. And when you're playing live, that is never going to be the case. So you might as well be working no. out before you play, or you're going to be like, Ugh. I remember learning exactly. that the hard way. Yeah. Shit was yeah. tiring. <laughs> Who, uh, yeah. Do you, do you ever sucks jam? knowing that you can't get out of your own shit. Like, yeah. Do you ever jam uh, any metal? Uh, I mean, I grew up my hair initially as a metalhead, and then as I was smoking more weed, I, the fucking the angst was kind of slowly smoked out of me, and then I kind of gravitated more towards hip hop. But the I'm actually working on a yeah, the trico again. Like <laughs> you think of like hip hop producers, I imagine the a decent percentage are ones who use the herb. You know what I mean? Whereas like I know metal, even though a lot of people do blaze the metal, it's definitely day. maybe more of a drinking subgenre. I, I feel like, you know, live gigs, most people are smashing beers and stuff like that. When when you were jamming um, metal, was it yeah, yeah, I fuck was with it metal. was it like heavier stuff or like alternative rock or was it was it like screaming, lots of screaming stuff? I'd say so like, you know, Iron Maiden, uh, Pantera, I guess mainly kind of more like thrash. Like Maiden was probably my favorite just cuz they put yeah. on a fucking awesome show. Their discography yeah, reputable. Um, even you know, like Children of Bodom, Arch Enemy. Uh, fuck. That's cool. Yeah. Oh me. It says Mark. Is your real name not Mark? Are we not allowed to call oh, you Mark? Oh no, shit. Yeah, thing? sorry. <laughs> I yeah, was no, really no, no, stoned out when uh, I was reading it. Uh, so I'm a wrestling fan, and Mark Kayfabe is basically just like a fucking alias. So it's like oh, <laughs> if I have to deal like the admin Mark is just fucking some dude Mark. You know what I mean? But yeah, no, I go by Pablo or Blunt. But no, I don't have the uh, I don't have the patience or skill. I tried to learn drums when I was younger, but never really got it. So just purely, purely like vocalist rapper. Like I'd like to, but finger wise and stuff, I just yeah, I don't have that skill set. 
What about you guys? Like not even piano? I feel as a beat maker, you would know like a little piano. Like, would you like be able to make your own beat if you wanted to? Or you just don't, don't care? You'd rather outsource? Man, it, it would be good. Like, I can do Mary Had a Little Lamb on the fucking keys. I've got that down packed. But um, <laughs> yeah, and something maybe to, to think. Like, I'd like to produce my own EP at some point. But I'm so time fucking stretched at the moment. I'm just kind of like trying to do one project at a time. Like, my ADD is fucking all over shop. But it's definitely something that I will do, and you know, at some point. Bro, I outsource too. It's okay. I work with specific people to get stuff. There's, yeah. it's too much time to do it all by yourself sometimes. You know, so I feel that. I yeah. feel that heavy. Yeah. I ask, I ask of you, nice gentlemen. Like work with other people as well. Yes, yeah. connections are smart. I ask of you, gentlemen, this: of the Beatles, which song of theirs lasted the longest on the charts? Yellow submarine. Incorrect. <sighs> Fuck. Hey, Jude. That damn it! That damn is it. correct. I was thinking too. Son of a boy. Oh, like, Surrender the hope. What you think about that? Is that up your alley? Yeah. Good. Good shit. Mr. High energy. Yeah. About to say, Mister K Fabe. Probably good workout music. <laughs> <laughs> biased, so, you know. When you when you That's blaze, it. do you prefer? Uh, we call them we call them bongs, but I think you guys call them cones or a handpipe or a joint, blunt. Obviously, yeah. your your blunt field. So I'd imagine the answer is obvious. Oh, well, I man, that's the thing. So blunts are definitely like that's the funnest. Like the hemp wrap as well, not the actual tobacco, which is obviously worse on the throat. But because blunts use so much weed, and I'm not like in a position where I'm fucking smoking pounds a week. Like bongs are the most effective, but bong field doesn't have the same ring to it. So. Bongs would be my like go-to, but ideally when I'm at a certain level where it's like, man, I can afford fucking different strains each night of the week. Like I know Cottonmouth Kings would have like a different piece, like Monday's bong, Tuesday's bong, shit like that. Like that's something to shoot to, but with maybe flavored blunts. But for now, just these little, uh, yeah, little bongs or cones as we call them in uh, Australia. I wonder why they're called cones. I ask everybody this, but because it doesn't, it's not the shape of a cone. A cone to me would be a joint. I don't understand how the term bong got turned into a cone. Yeah. I think because, yeah, like a cone piece is like a triangle. If you think of like traffic cones, like the cone piece does. Oh, like a there. traffic that cone. kind of like a triangle. A traffic yeah, cone. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, I kind of get it. I kind of get it when you when you describe it like that. That's the best, that's the best answer we've ever gotten. <laughs> Literally <laughs> that fast. Yeah. Uh, Yo, Blunt, if you were looking outside playing, your window yeah. right now, how many kangaroos can you count currently? Like, are there kangaroos outside your house? Okay, so there's no kangaroos outside the house, but uh, population-wise, I think there's like 28 or 29 million people and about 300 to 400 million kangaroos. So kangaroos, like, hugely outnumber people, which is fucking nuts. What? So, like, Let's no natural predators. Kangaroos. 400 million yeah. kangaroos? Damn, son. Yeah, That's a crazy. lot. It's 300 to 400 million. Like, it's fucking you a lot one? more. Go catch one. Can you, would you like, uh, grab one and bring it home? <laughs> dude, they're, they're like, they're OG martial artists. Like, they can fucking push <laughs> kick. They can clinch. They trip. Like, they're lean muscle as well. They're fucking jacks. You see them, they're fucking veins are popping in their arms and shit. Yeah, they're, they're hectic, man. Like, they're, they're so Australian's national anthem, but it's animals. They're fucking, like, to me, they're yeah! fascinating. Like, they're fucking deservedly. Like, what the fuck are those? Like, giant bunnies with fucking jacked up legs and shit no predators just fucking fucking around the country hopping around yeah what's a predator the dream. kangaroo yeah. you know what humans humans are the enemies <laughs> are you are you a fan of yeah, are you a fan are, of yeah, uh yeah. Are, are you a fan of little dicky in general i love little dicky happy yeah. thursday lbs fam gotta love friday eve let's fucking go <laughs> Hell yeah! So, so the, oh, we just Yo, set up. Hello, talk was my favorite from Little Dicky. We just set up. Uh, we, oh I, yeah, yeah, I, dude. Just yeah. I call them Dono triggers. Oh, they're yeah. they're exact dollar amounts that people can donate, and certain bands have has messaged me and set up uh, dollar amounts, and we just got hit with one from our boys in Atlas. Yeah. So going back to Little Dicky, do you watch do you watch the show, Dave? Yes. Yeah, so um, I don't have, I haven't seen season two, but I watched season one and I thought it was fucking completely original in terms of it's funny, but it's super awkward and just painfully cringe at points, which is deliberate. Like he's really exposing a fucking vulnerable, like weird side that especially rappers don't show. You don't show any vulnerability. 
is typically the model, whereas he's showing the fucking painful, you know, crippling it's... kind of moments in many episodes, but done in such a funny way. Like it's a very original. His pacing. There's some weird, weird, weird. Like in season two, they they got the budget. So they get some big names, but it is yeah, yep. some really, really off the wall oddball episodes. But uh, it's it's great. It's fantastic. You know, the one episode where dude was getting all crazy. That like I was so teary eyed in that. You start freaking out. Oh, you mean, uh, I forgot his name off the top of my head. Yeah, Gator. Oh, yeah, dude, you know, I was in tears. Yeah, yeah. I was in tears that episode. Give I my spin that. to Mr. Blunt. Suck. Hashtag hell yeah. Plude has donated ten dollars, oh. and he says, "Give the spin to Mr. Blunt," meaning Plude has passed on the silver ticket oh, yeah. to you, sir. So, Bluntfield, what that, what that means is, next okay. time you have a release, hit me up. We're gonna skip the wait automatically for you, and if you're down via Zoom, like where it's like the above and below camera on the side, me and you, I want we we're gonna review yep. one of your songs together. If that's cool, like it's an actual episode, but like while we're doing, I'll probably okay. pause it a couple times, ask you questions, talk, blah, blah, blah. It's just kind of like a fun, that's what a silver ticket is. So it's kind of like a fun way of doing a review. Dude, that's awesome. Hell yeah. Thank so yeah. whenever yeah, you're ready, just holler Plude, at me. That bro. was courtesy of Mr. Ryan Plude right there. That's my best friend. Fuck off. <laughs> tell, Thanks, me, yeah. tell me, so tell me yeah. about how the track Amateur Rapper came about. Uh, since we're talking about Lil Dicky, like why why this particular He's beat? Thinking about you and yeah. hit him career. That's what. Hit him, hit him. It's uh yeah yeah. So a uh, professional rapper, obviously that fucking video, super dope, and just the way he broke it down. And that track was essentially about him making it as a full time rapper. And I fucking love that beat. So I was just like, well, for me, I'm still working day jobs and grinding just to be able to fund the projects and put enough money for merch and stuff like that. So Let's I figured. Go. If I do a flip of that called Amateur Rapper, which is just where I'm at trying to get to that level where music is my only source of income, you know, that's kind of what the track is about. I'm just kind of venting over a fucking banger beat. So shout out to the original producer. Hell yeah, we're hanging out with Bluntfield. This is Amateur Rapper. Yo, we we push that button whenever we feel like, God bless you for being on this show before you're not a local (laughs) artist anymore. Meaning we, we think we think that you're gonna Thanks, take man. off and and we appreciate you coming on the show now as opposed to when you're rich and famous and be like nah I don't want to be on the show. <laughs> so, well, man, what you guys are doing is kind of like what you know MTV maybe was back in the day where people can come here to listen to original new music all the time on the regular. So the way it is now, you guys are giving a massive platform and cross pollinating where people probably wouldn't have discovered the bands without. Whereas this is like a fucking haven for all kinds of styles and genres and shit. So again, appreciate you guys for having me on and for doing this for the music, you know, for music in general. It is our pleasure. TV and local band smoke out in the same sense. I couldn't believe it. I can't believe it. (laughs) You're amazing, dude. Yo, I leave you with one final question, uh, Bluntfield. By the way, shout out to right now and how gross that would be. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to local band smoke out Australia. Who will have you on a little later today, by the way. Local man smoking Australia. Shout out to CJ and Jace. Yeah, yeah. Um, my my final question for you is who is someone that you would like to collab with? And if if it let's just say you have an infinite briefcase of money and this artist is like, okay, that'll do. Who is the artist that you like dream, dream of collabing with? Mac Dre. I mean, shit. Three three that come to mind would be like Tech Nine, Red Man, Ooh. and Cypress Hill. Like, if, if I got any of those, like, holy fuck. Even, like, Be Real or Send Dog on, like, a separate track as well. But, like, those would be the ones, if I got a verse, like, I could die the next day and be like, fuck yeah, I achieved more than I could have dreamed, you know? Like, that'd be I don't think this. Goals, I but. don't think the Zen Dog one is that hard, actually. I think I know a couple of people that... I know a bunch of people that have definitely played with Power Flow before in his side project. Um, yep. So I might be yeah, able yeah. to shoot you a connection down the road. I'll see what yeah, I can do. Fuck. I'll, I'll that'll see be, yeah, that'd be epic. I'll see what I can do. I'll reach out I'll reach out to somebody for you. But uh is there anything else you'd like to plug real fast before we before we say goodbye to you, brother? Um shit. Uh no, nah, just thanks for tuning in everyone. Again, if you want to check out any music, Mad Fap Entertainment on uh YouTube, Blumfield on Spotify. If you want any merch or anything like that, that's pretty much how we fund the projects. Got these bloody drink holders here, Mad Fap, fuck yeah. Nice. Oh, guess Hell what? Yeah. We got the bong mats too. Bong mats, mouse pads, oh, fucking t shirts. Yeah! If you want stickers, we got that on that independent tip, son. Thank you for having us, local band Smoke Out. 
Much love, guys. You're awesome, brother. Cheers. Thanks, Ladies man. and gentlemen, <laughs> Bluntfield. Yeah, yeah. Please go like all of his social media pages, support him, follow him on Spotify, and I'll be on the lookout for some new records coming, and definitely be on the lookout for some more stuff from Mad Fab Entertainment. Sir, we appreciate you doing this. Have fun Fuck with yeah. CJ and Jace on Local Man Smoking Australia. Cheers, and of course, keep blazing. Smoke weed every day.